we're going to start the next panel. Uh, we have two guests with us today. We have Dr. Rosa Gatti, who is an alumna of Arts and Sciences from Villanova, 1972, and is former, <laughs> former Senior Vice President of Corporate Communication at ESPN. Uh, we also have with us Dr. Sha Ling. Um, Dr. Sha is the um, Associate Professor and Vice Director of the Graduate School at the Shanghai Academy of Social Sciences. And um, her topic is on, her, actually her field is on adolescent psychology, uh, sociology and youth psychology. And her talk will be about a pilot investigation of the life pain index of Shanghai youth employees. I'll turn it over to you. We'll have about 20 minutes each and the same amount of time for questions. Thanks. Uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, thanks to the Villanova University for giving me an opportunity to introduce our researcher. And uh, thanks to the translator for your yeah, hard working. Uh, I have not given a uh, presentation in English for so, for so long. So um, if I have problems in this is from my tele television experience. Um, if I have problems in making me understood, please allow me to ask for help. Um, it's an initial, initial survey result of our research. I will present it from four parts. Um, uh, from five, <laughs> five parts. As we know, entering the 21st century, and the notion of happiness as a topic for public discussion has attracted increasing attention among Chinese people. Um, for example, columns discussing the topic of happiness um, Surveys comparing the index of happiness among different cities. Um, with the economy continually developing and the life change rapidly, we can pre predict uh, that more Chinese people will think about and pay more attention to the question of what life is happy and uh, how they might achieve happy. Happiness. <laughs> and we know the youth is the future of our society, but also it's present. Um, but adolescents may not be the advan advan advantage <laughs> group in our society. Um, they may even out to be the victims of those changes. And therefore, in our review, view, we, should, we may should start instead with the negative effects on the daily lives of adolescents. With these steps, we hope to find the best ways in which to help adolescents overcome these difficulties. Um, theory of view is very simple. Uh, in this research, we emphasize the origins of pain from objective living condition with causes in society, institutions, organizations, and interactions. Um, the objective condition people apply most to discuss pain of adolescents are mainly concentrated in education, family, career, recreation, normal crazy, environment, relationship, affiliation, future, anticipation, and so on. Um, the constitution of the feeling of pain can be regarded as a negative effective state of adolescence. As brought forth in Aglu's argument in his general stain theory. Um, Aglu holds that the situation containing more negative and intensive stimuli 
would manifest delinquency or other deviant behaviors. Um, China experience, is experiencing fast social change and development. It cannot be ignored that the negative stimuli caused by the entire environment has been intensified in recent years. Some studies show that modern adolescents withstand large amounts of pressure, both mentally and physically, which in turn makes them deeply frustrated and unhappy. So our research on the life pain index of young employer aims to investigate the social negative stimuli faced by young employer in current environment. We hope to, uh, it can be developed into the life pain index of adolescents and then used to access problems and uh, promote some precautional action so as to make future prevention. We choose the household register young employer from one central district, urban district of Shanghai by stratified sampling, which aged from 18 to 40 years. And we can see some fingers, features of the sample. Um, female is uh, more than uh, male with the education level um, of college, college graduate or above. The average age is, uh, 20, is 27.6. Um, we self-made questionnaire of the life mystery index of a young employer on the basis of the um, Taiwanese scholars. Um, we used the leaked type five point scale, um, which, which uh, highest scores five means that the interviews strongly agree with and one is strongly disagreeing with. We remove, remove the items less than 0.4 of fact loading and retain 20 items. So the highest score is 100 and the lowest is 20. The higher the score and the stronger intensity the misery. And secondly is the personal basic date, including gender, age, education level, political affiliation, and the religion's belief, and the marriage status, uh, and the family incomes, and so on. And the questionnaires are all completed and uh, recovered on the spot. So let's see, let's see the results. Um, we use the exploratory factor analysis um, the extraction method is pretty simple component analysis. We use per max oblique rotation to rotate the factors. The KMO may of sampling adequacy is uh, point, uh, 0.894 <coughs> and the battery test of sophisticated is uh, 2950. And the value of KMO um, is, is greater than 0.6. So we think the date is eligible for the basic condition of the factor analysis. Um, there are four factors of which the eigenvalues over one the explaining 50, 
56.08 commutative percent of variance. The factors, we link the factors as occupational environment, family and layer, quality of life, and the social situations, respectively. And those four factors are probably the social structure and the environment factors that causes the misery of young employers. The Kronbacher's alpha of those four factors and the total scale at 0 0.71, 0 0.65, 0.85. And so, it can be considered the scale has um, good internal consistency of reliability. Let me see the abstract table of factor analysis results of young employees missing index. And these numbers represent the factor loading this is the four factors we extracted, and uh, this is the items. And this is the eigenvalue of the four factors and the cumulative explain the variance. And let me see the overall score of the mystery index. The average score and SD of each factor and item can be seen in this table. The results show that the top three mystery items in average score rank uh, means here next the high housing price and the rise of price. Then it's the parenting player. It's the highest score. The lowest three rank is. Uh, Below being with or uh, being with the family and uh, family expectation and the social security. The total score of all mystery index is fifty six fifty six point one. Four eight, show casting that the mystery of the overall social environment of Shanghai employees are tolerable. We think, <laughs> just we think. Uh, for the for the four dimensions of all four factors of life, we se we select her because uh, each. Dimension have different uh, have uh, different numbers of items, so we use the average. We can see the mean of life quality ranks the highest. Scoring is three point three six, while um, oh, sorry. The family, family and layer is the lowest, 2.26. Occupational environment ranks the second lowest, scoring 2.65. Um, our research that shows that family relationship and the vocational development are more tolerable, or uh, in other words, it's mis 
is uh, less miserable comparing to the life quality and the social situation and the future expectations. Um, in other words, we can see maybe the influence of the society and the government play a large role on the source of young employers' misery. And this is the score of misery index in four dimensions of young employers in different gender. We can see the order is accordant between male and female. Uh, also, between different ages, the weight for the, the is accordant in order. So we use MALOVA to test uh, the differences between different gender and age. We can see the values of mixed number of age and the, age, the interaction between age and gender is not significant. Um, but uh, gender, the weakened lambdas of gender is significant at uh, um, zero, 0.5 level. So it means that effect of gender may be significant in the dimension of occupational environment, family layer, uh, family and layer and social situations. Male score is, uh, sorry. Male's score is higher than females. We also use male law to test the difference between uh, among different among different education level, you can see <coughs> and it's in the family and layer and the social situation. This level, this this dimension is significant. And the post hoc shows the, um, the high school em employers is feel high miserable than the, than the undergraduate and the graduate and uh, the college feels more miserable in this dimension than the graduate. It's hard for me <laughs> to, to pre represent myself <laughs> in English. <laughs> okay. And this is the Malova test for the different monthly income. Um, because an old and just a Chinese old saying, it goes to a destitute couple, nothing goes well. So we want to see what factor does economic condition cause to the four dimensions of life measure. Um, we divide the uh, after-tax monthly income into four groups. Um, but uh, in our, but uh, the, the what, First is under 300 RMB. Um, the group of about 800 RMB, which only have four young people, so we didn't include it in the Malova. 
um, VIX number of this H is, uh, we didn't, is 0.93. So we, the result of F test between subjects effects shoe that the factor of monthly income are significant only in life quality, quality of life and, situ and the social situations. Um, post hoc shows that in aspect of life quality, the misery scores of young employers whose monthly income under, two, under 300 RMB are significant higher than those whose monthly income between two, between 300 and 400. The same trend in the dimension of social situations. The misery scores of the lowest income group are significant higher than those between 300 and uh, 500. And uh, 500 above 500 to the 800, 800. This indicate that income will affect her life misery in some extent, but uh, it's limited in dimension and uh, degree. Uh, maybe the higher the income, the lower misery feeling in the aspect of social situations. Um, but the miserable feelings of other dimensions are not necessarily change significant. Um, different marriage status also have no significant differences in life misery of four dimensions. So I can came to the conclusions. And through these investigations, the researchers, we hope to understand the orange and the effect of the lactive stimulus affecting young employers in the overall social structure. Um, this research will aid the preliminary understanding of how the social environment impacts young employers. However, this research can only be called a pre-researcher, will, which will explain the score and the amount of the sample in order to construct a score of life misery index of adolescents. Um, four factors have been extracted. It's occupational environment, family land layer, quality of life, and social situations. Um, we consider these factors as parts of the social structure or social environment, which may be responsible for the young employer's misery. Uh, however, but only this of the variation is explained. And so we need to add more observing items for the questionnaire in order to improve the quality of the infrastructure. Um, the first uh, conclusion is the misery caused by comprehensive environment we think is generally tolerable to young employers. Um, maybe in some isolated index, the misery feelings caused by the society and the government such as high housing price, high commodity price traffic problem, and the legal protections that belong to the area of life quality and the social situations are higher than those caused by family or occupational situations. Age and married status have no significant impact on the miserable index. Um, may you feel significantly more pains from occupation, family, and society than famous do. 
Uh, the factor of different levels of education on the misery index is mainly reflected on the family and the layer dimension and the social situations dimension. The higher the level of education, the lower the pain endured in these two dimensions. And the monthly income, the impact of it is embodied mainly on the dimensions of quality of life and the social situation. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Thanks for following my poor English. I think before we, um, is it okay, Liz, if I, I take some questions first? Sure, okay. Um, I'd like to take a few questions before uh, Dr. Gotti uh, presents. Okay, Saki. Yeah, Dr. Shi, I wanted to ask you, you said males, they're um, males. feeling more pain, misery than females. So I was wondering if it's one child and that child <laughs> grows up, then why should it matter more for males? If there's only one child in the family, then it should be the same, right? No, I mean, whether it's, if it's only child, whether male or female, then why should this difference be there if most families are having one child? The child all the same. Man is in charge of the outside home, but uh, mm. female are in charge of the inside of the home. <laughs> it's nice why? Yeah, it's it's sort of that. It's, it's good. So maybe I think it's uh, child, child cre 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 Right, but if it's one female child, then that female child child has to go outside and work. Yeah. So then why should there be this difference? If it was all China, then maybe it would still matter. But if it's one child in the family, then why should there be this gender difference? Mm. If both of them are going to the marketplace to prove themselves. Now, you know, I'm not questioning yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But why? It's inter matter? interesting. That's yeah. an interesting yeah. point. And what is it in English? So like um, what technology or tools do you use to give us your numbers? Oh, we use the mix type five scales. And for example, we give a, give a description. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. For example, like, uh, um, um, yeah, yeah, questionnaire. Yeah, questionnaire. No, no, questionnaire. Questionnaire, questionnaire. questionnaire to collect uh, data. Oh. So the sample is limited. So this is only the first step of the survey. Yeah. So the numbers are limited. It is limited to the employers. So it is only focused on the yeah. new poor employees. So, um, 因为我刚介绍了我们的主要的目的，最终的目的是想要发展成一个
针对年轻人的量表，那么肯定就包括你所说的学生和职业青年。接下来我们就是要扩大样本的数目，这只是一个预调查，包括我的 questionnaire， so lead to modify， and、uh, get so better. This is the survey and the questionnaires are all about the youth are who are in college, but we are going to do more survey about the student who are in college, and this is a further step. As a scholar, This question is something that we're also thinking for an answer for. So we will want to do such research. That's why this research is so Okay, Ken Lao's or the new word is a bit like a, uh, they are they are old enough that they are live on their parents, stay in at home. That is a very new thing in China. I think it's something happening in my also common in Japan. Japan <laughs> Japanese. Um Ken Lao Zhu Ta Shi Bu Yuan Shi Gong Jo Shi Xia.这是还是一个初步的，所以我是想就是在今后我会扩大样本，包括实际上我们也做了外来的，你知道在中国还有外来的，所以说我只是选择了其中的一部分样本，是有工作的人，对，我是想先从这部分入手来看一看他们的情况
Dr. Uh, to Dr. Gadi. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm fine. Jeez. Thank you. It's obvious we need to have more sessions on this topic. <laughs> <laughs> and, and certainly there's many aspects that apply to American society and our young people and the pressure they're under and also the seniors. How many of you are seniors at Villanova? Yeah, yeah and the pressure you're under. A and, uh, but there's a lot of issues in our society surrounding adolescence and uh, depression, as we know, anxiety. Um, I am honored to be here, and thank you for the title, Doctor. <laughs> that is an honorary degree, by the way. <laughs> but I did, uh, I did do a lot of uh, work in the, the business world, um, and my experience is very practical, and I think I've earned a doctorate from the bumps and bruises along the way. Um, at Villanova, I was a uh, language major, and when I hear everyone conversing, it's, it's really exciting. Um, I was a uh, French major. And um, I also study religions of the world and philosophies, and I would immerse myself into each one and try to understand it. So Marxism and communism, and I would, you know, I, and socialism, I would identify, I would say, in fact, I went home to my parents and said, I, I understand that thinking, and they said, really? <laughs> you, know, we're the, you know, we're in a capitalistic society. Um, but what that did, you know, I wish I had these types of classes when I was in school because it would have been invaluable to apply these lessons and learnings to the workplace. But because I had that broad background and understanding of other people and cultures, I studied a little bit of Spanish, I think that prepared me uh, for my career, which I ended up in sports, PR, sports communication, go figure, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I worked at ESPN for 33 years, starting in the first year when we were only 100 employees and, and growing now to a multinational company. Um, and we're owned by the Walt Disney Company. And we have a park there uh, due to open in Shanghai, the Disney Park next year, yes. So I'll be visiting. <laughs> um, what I'd like to talk about, as a woman in a male-dominated world, um, I would try to put myself in other people's shoes. You know, what it was like for me to be the only woman in meetings, and what must it like be, f you know, for an African American, the only African American in a meeting. And so I would try to understand that, even though I didn't have that experience. And in the early 90s, I decided to start a diversity committee at ESPN. And I tried to think of every aspect of diversity, from African American people of color to disabled, disabled who are shut out of jobs and society very often, to um, even you know, people who were older in the workplace, aging, veterans, you know, military. Um, and a white male. And many people said, why do you have a white male on the diversity committee? And I said, because we need to hear and converse from all sides, all angles, to understand each other. I tried to be very action-oriented. Um, I wanted to get results fast. And I learned a big lesson. I, I said, let's start, let's do the life cycle of an employee. Recruitment, how do we go out and recruit employees? How do we do orientation for those employees coming into our company? What about coaching them for promotions? What about you know, that retention? Oftentimes, women and minorities were you know, off to fend for themselves and weren't receiving the mentoring, the necessary mentoring. And that, that's changed dramatically. But also, what about when an employee leaves us? What about those exit interviews? And so I wanted to, to get these actions done, and what I found happened in each committee meeting, all these stories were bubbling up. And 
talk about stereotyping. And I had to put a stop to the actions. This is a really important lesson to me. And I, we had to stop and talk about the feelings of the diverse employees. What was their history? We had to understand where they came from. And I remember vividly an African-American male saying, Rosa, you don't know what it's like to walk down the street in New York and go past a woman who clutches her purse. She holds her purse. You don't know what that's like. <coughs> So we put together a body of work for our top executives to understand these feelings. And we did develop the action steps too for recruitment, how we could become a better company and be more diverse to serve our diverse audience. People love sports. Sports are a universal language. And sports has broken down many barriers for race, and for appreciation, Yao Ming <laughs> and his athletic ability. Um, and, and there's an example that stands out in my mind. I had a director of human resources who was working with me on these diversity initiatives, and she was from India. And my boss said to me, you know, I'm not sure about Lada. I'm really not sure if she's you know, can, can do the job. And fortunately, I said, why? Why do you say this? And, and often we forget to ask that question. Why are you saying this? And he said, because she doesn't look at me when she's speaking. And I went, oh, okay. So I went back to Lada. <clears throat> and this is where it's all about communication. It's all about dialogue, the story. And I went back to her and I said, Lada, <laughs> our boss is concerned about y you, that you don't look at him when you're speaking. And she right away said, oh, oh, in our culture, women don't look in the eyes of men. I, I, and I grew up this way and I'm uncomfortable about that. I said, oh, yes, that makes sense to me. And I went back to him. And I told him, and he said, ah. And if that communication did not happen, you know, she would not realize why she wasn't succeeding. It all comes back to that communication, that dialogue. Um, I made big mistakes in the first half of my career. So I was successful, yes. <laughs> but big mistakes. I avoided, I didn't want to work with, I didn't want to deal with the people, the executives who didn't respect me or listen to me. And, and they were smaller in numbers. You know, most of the male executives did accept me. I wanted, I avoided them. I didn't want to speak to the executive who was misleading, who was dishonest. I would avoid them. I didn't even want to deal with them, right? A bit of self-righteousness, yes. So I had to learn to reach out to those I did not like. And by the way, this happens with you as students. <laughs> this happens in everyday life. And it's very difficult to reach out to the people that we don't like, the people we don't respect and we have to reach out. So there are so many images now today of President Jing, Xi Jinping, did I pronounce that right, almost? Yes. Meeting in Seattle, you know? Yes. Right, uh, these are dramatic uh, images. Obama with Congress, Obama with Putin. Wow, you know, a <laughs> lot. <laughs> Interesting, but communication. We may not agree, but that dialogue is so important. And Pope Francis, Pope Francis, how basic about engaging, engaging with people. And if we 
Don't do that from one principal point. If we don't communicate, you know, the exercise of communication, listening and conversing, if we don't do that from a place of honesty, it will never work. It doesn't work. There has to be the foundation of honesty. And I saw this every day in the workplace, every day. Because you'll have situations happen, and as a PR advisor, I had to be very diplomatic and say, well, we can't say that to the press. Why, why? Well, because it's not true. <laughs> and others know, other employees know that's not true. And if we are not honest with the press, we will lose credibility. Our brand will suffer. What are brands about? Brands are who we are. We each have a brand. It's who we are. What do we stand for? What does the company stand for? And if we're dishonest as individuals, or a company is dishonest, you will lose credibility, right? And lack of trust. Look at Volkswagen. Look at Volkswagen. Look at our own General Motors. Many, many, we can go on and on with many companies. And that all happens internally because somebody wants to manipulate the information to sweep it under the rug, right? I hope it, th those of you who are Chinese, I'm, I'm speaking a little more slowly, but I, I hope that you un understand. Um, I want to stop for one minute as I observe companies and honesty and sports and the great world of sports, right, that bring, also brings our universe together. What also is happening in sports from an ethical standpoint, deflate gate, spy gate. I don't know if you know about these. We'll tell you about them at dinner, <laughs> at lunch. But uh, cheating and coaches cheating and teaching our youth about um, how to get an edge by cheating. Speaking about this in later years and also because I'm retired, and I don't have to be as careful <laughs> about uh, NFL reactions or college football reactions and so on. So I think our world is in a scary place. It's in a very scary place with terrorism and painting people with one brush and not understanding Muslims in radicals. And so our society is in a scary place, but I also see it in a very exciting place because of the dynamics of communication and exchange programs and this very conference where we are exchanging ideas with China. How beautiful this is. And so I've I'm honored to be with all of you and to learn from you. Thank you very much. So while it may seem that these two topics are really completely unrelated, they're not. No. Uh, one of the things uh, I observed last summer when I was in China, I um, met with a lot of companies. And one of the biggest challenges that most, whether it's Chinese companies, state-owned companies, or multinational companies, Microsoft, um, met with a bunch of different ones, um, is retention. Mm. Retention is a very big problem. Mm. And again, th this problem of retention is not unique to China, but it's, it has its own unique characteristics. Social mobility is rising very yes, fast. It's yes. very easy. People change jobs like I change my shirt. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a constant retaining people is very hard. Mm -hmm. Part of it is assessing their happiness. Right. And their happiness is a very hard thing to measure, as you know, your research makes it one of those very difficult things. So um, that cultural thing, a lot of them are working for 
multinationals, American mm. companies mm. especially, and that cross-cultural communication between the people in Shanghai and Beijing that I've met working for multinationals is very, very hard. I because can imagine. The corporate gods fly over to oh, the yes. <laughs> and meet with the Chinese employees, and they shake their heads. Say We're it's very guilty. Crazy. Very guilty. Oh, American yeah. a, uh, companies problem. and coaches need to get some uh, diversity training yeah. and cultural, cross-culture training. So fitting yes. into a Western multinational is oh, yes. not an easy thing, especially an American multinational is no. even more unique no. in some ways, and vice versa. I've been on the other mm -hmm. side where I've had to fit into a Chinese company. That's hard, mm -hmm. <laughs> especially sure. for an American. Sure. So. So, and, and we at, at ESPN, at the Walt Disney Company at ESPN, um, going back five years or more, there was much more focus on training um, and cross-cultural training. So that, that's a big area that's taking place right now. And to get rid of an American attitude, you know, um, and that we learn by sharing. We learn by sharing. And one of the, the key things that I learned from last summer was the best way to enhance retention and keep people from leaving companies was to talk to them. Sure. Because these employees, really, yeah. once you engage them, mm -hmm. once you figure out what's going inside their heads, why are they leaving <coughs> after eight months? For 200 quai, they're leaving mm -hmm. for another, which is nothing. They're moving, it's not just because of what they're earning, it's because of the communication, the right. environment, their yeah. happiness. So, mm -hmm. alternative for questions, we have questions for Dr. Uh, I hear you go again. Rosa. Dr. Rosa. <laughs> Call me Rosa. Rosa? Yes, Kate. So, um, talk a little bit about some of the outcomes of the women versus men situation. How do you think the company is going to do um, Thanks, Kate. Um, we were able to take the body of information from our diverse employees and present their feelings and cultures um, to, all, uh, to our executives. And then we put all of our executives from top down through diversity training. And we utilized um, a lot of the uh, materials that we had. We brought in a diversity consultant as well. And we also engaged our international employees who were from India, China, Australia, uh, Latin America. Uh, so we engaged many of our leaders from other countries <coughs> to talk about their experiences. Um, and then, uh, but what we found, it, 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 too often people felt, well, because they went to diversity training, okay, that was checked off their list, right? It had to be just continual dialogue and continual messaging. Um, on accepting others who are different than you. Like, like ten, tends to hire like. And breaking that down, uh, we had to continually talk about that. We also had to talk about, we would go to, this still happens. We go to meetings and the women are all sitting together <laughs> and the men are sitting together, right? And how can we break down and really have dialogue I, I will give you, a, 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 so we, we took it uh, to overarching training and then day by day training. Um, um, it, it has to be, uh, it, and we, by having a d diverse committee, uh, we asked them to engage other diverse employees and to be brave enough to speak up in their environment. Um, I don't know if I'm answering your question, but, but um, very difficult. Every day, as we say in sports, blocking and tackling, every day. And we would issue materials about cultures. We would issue protocol um, uh, for working with other cultures. Uh, very, very tedious. This is starting in the 90s and continuing that tedious work. Um, and we, we still had issues. It dawned on me in my last years at ESPN that often male executives did not invite me to lunch. Now, I had a good relationships with them, good working relationships, but they didn't invite me to lunch. And I invited our head of sales to lunch. 
And when I, to discuss some matters, when I went to pick up the tab, the, the bill, he was all apoplectic. He was like, oh, no, 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 I'll take it. And I said, we, and we were both senior vice presidents. He said, I'll, I'll take it. I said, no, no, I invited you to lunch. I'm picking up the tab. And he was all. And I had conversations with him. I said, do you ever take, it, it gets down to this basic, do you ever take your female executives to lunch? And he said, uh, no, I'm worried about what they may think. I said, really? <laughs> I said, all you have to say is, let's go talk about that Procter & Gamble deal. Let's go talk about that Anheuser-Busch deal. It's all in your approach. But this only happened <laughs> four years ago, you see. So we're still learning to break down you know, this, this, these kinds of feelings in the United States, but also cross cultures. We're still learning. Mm -hmm. to know um, other different uh, yes. cultures. Yes. But how about your company train the employees from different cultures, yes. Yes. no Americans? Yes. yes. Very good question. We did not do a good job <laughs> on that. No. Because that's also very important. Very I important. Understand important. each other's culture. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So the person that played the biggest role in that was our head of international. And he kept reminding us, you're thinking like Americans, you know. Oh, because he told me that the Indian uh, lady, yes. she said because of her culture, yes. she feels uncomfortable yes. to look at a male's culture. Exactly. But if she knows right. in American culture, you shouldn't look at people's face to yes. show your respect. Yes. I Right, and so we did train, but we also want to respect other cultures. Yeah, I think that's a thing, isn't so it's a balancing, <laughs> it's a balancing act. So what we did, it was really led by our international department about how they were working with other countries, and also working for the Walt Disney Company, <laughs> which is around the world. The Walt Disney Company, many international executives. So there was a lot of international training of diversity. And not to go in like we're the big bad Americans, you know? <laughs> uh, no, no. And our head of international was the driving force on that. And I respected him for that. But I was not as aware of international cultures as he was. And so, um, so we brought in a lot of diversity training and Disney does a lot of international training. And wherever we would go, we would receive protocol. Now, we hosted, back in the 80s, mid-80s, Chinese television executives who came into ESPN, and they were all in gray, in uniform. And <laughs> I'm getting some smiles here. And we were intrigued, and we had received from the US government protocol and all kinds of points. And also the menu to serve, we were serving Chinese food and we asked a local Chinese uh, catering firm, well actually they weren't Chinese. This is mistake number one. They were not Chinese. We went to a gourmet restaurant, asked them to make Chinese, right? And would they please have chopsticks? Guess what happened? They had, they came with these long chopsticks, like this, right? And the Chinese executives, these are television and government executives, and they're like, <laughs> and they're gonna eat. They were the cooking chopsticks. Oh, <laughs> faux pas, mistake, right? Big mistake. But US government had given us protocol and we all followed that. And my assistant, who was helping to serve and clean up, this is in 1984, one second. 
We were told, you, you do not touch, women do not touch a male executive. And I'm watching, and she's serving, and she's trying to get the attention of this Chinese executive, and she tapped him like this. And every, all the executives went, oh, <laughs> like this. And you know what that means. Anyway, I had to call her over. But, but, um, but we learned big lessons there, you know, about hosting another culture. And, and you know, we received materials. So we, we depended on uh, the U.S. State Department to give us materials and learn from that. Um, but we have a long way to go. The United States has a long way to go in understanding other cultures. Yes, I just I, our time, I know just told a very short story to, mm -hmm. to want to, I just talked about uh, what is the culture and what is dialogue. Mm -hmm. Sometimes some of the little small things make me feel, I just very confused. For yeah. example, Yang Ming, we know Yang Ming, what happened in Yang Ming. Yes. So Yang Ming has a big uh, issue and uh, shut down the restaurant. So I went to and the market call. I say, congratulations, now you get all the guests here. You know what they say? No, our business is down too. Because they are don't think Yang Ming is Yang Ming. That's Chinese food. All the Chinese, we as a one person. Some one bad, all Chinese bad. One restaurant is no good, all the Chinese restaurants are doubted by the yeah, people. Yes. We all have to This happens all the time. You know, the bias. bad Americans, most of them. Not the just American, Chinese do the same thing. Same thing? thing. <laughs> like <a> Judgment. One <laughs> McDonald has problem. All the American yes. fast food has problem. So this is a very tough job for, for Earth. Yes. Like well, for Disney, yeah, for Disneyland in, in other countries, uh, for example, <laughs> Shark, you know, when they were serving shark? Shark fin soup. Fins. Shark, soup. shark yes. fin soup. Yeah, so we are, I, I think that we're in a better place of learning, but we still have a long ways to go. And uh, it depends how open. I would find that a lot of our male executives, I was reading articles in USA Today every day about diversity and diverse companies and what it's like for Asian Americans. I'm reading those all the time. But I found that a lot of our executives were not reading about these things. And uh, so there's stu we still have a ways to go. But the diversity training and the diver it's ongoing dialogue uh, and understanding of other cultures. And it's exciting when we learn from each other. Right. So thank you very much. I think it's <laughs>